Hello, and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen, and today we are not making soap. We are gonna make natural deodorants. And one of the inspirations was Wholesale Supplies Plus was having a clearance sale on some things, and I found these teeny little half ounce uh, deodorant jars. They come with a lid and a twisty base on there, and I thought these would be perfect for travel. I love the size. And so we have two different recipes we're gonna to do today. I have one regular natural deodorant. If you look up natural homemade deodorant, there are lots and hundreds of recipes out there. But I particularly like this recipe uh, for two reasons. <laughs> one is it uses a touch of beeswax to help make it, make it firm so that it won't like get smushy and melty. And the other reason is I have a special ingredient. Um, most homemade deodorant recipes call for a coconut oil, and we are using coconut oil, but I'm gonna use a 92 degree coconut oil. So it has a little bit higher melting point. Um, again, for, you know, so it doesn't get so mushy. Um, that's one of the issues with some deodorants. Some people will make a deodorant and put it in a little pot and use their fingers, you know, in the underarm. Yeah, I'm not super into that. This recipe also has mango butter in it, so it's gentle and it's moisturizing. You know, our armpits deserve to be cared for also. <laughs> uh, the first one does have baking soda in it. And um, some people don't have an issue with baking soda in their deodorant, but some people do have sensitive skin and it can cause irritation. So we have a baking soda free version also, which has some shea butter in there. Again, for the moisturizing, pamper your skin, no matter what part of your body it's on, you gotta take care of your skin. So we're gonna make both of these deodorants today. We're gonna use some essential oils in there for a scent. You could leave it unscented too. It's no issue with that. Now. Is this gonna work the same as a heavy-duty antiperspirant from the grocery store? No, no it's not. This is not an antiperspirant. Um, it's not gonna clog your pores and it's not gonna stop you from perspiring. Uh, it's aluminum-free, obviously. Um, and I personally try to avoid aluminum. I don't cook with it and I don't put it on my body. Uh, it's been linked to Alzheimer's and all kinds of stuff that I don't want. <laughs> so I'm all into aluminum-free. Um, and so it's a deodorant, which means it will help neutralize odors, body odors in your armpits. That's what a deodorant does. So this is not an antiperspirant. I'm just trying to make that clarification there. Right. All of that being said, we're gonna get all the ingredients pulled together and we'll go step by step through a basic homemade deodorant and a sensitive skin version. So let's get it together and make some deodorant. All right, we are back and ready to roll with our first natural deodorant. And this is gonna be the baking soda one if you don't have sensitive skin. Uh, so let's talk about some of the ingredients here. This is my 92 degree uh, coconut oil. And I got this from Soper's Choice. Um, that's where I've seen it. Uh, I'm sure it's available in other places. I'll look around and see if I can find a link. But um, I got this big one a little while ago. And so I'm, I'm glad to be diving in and getting to use it. I will say, this is a difficult bottle to have this oil in because it is really, really hard when it's cold. So I took this whole big bottle and immersed it in a um, big pot of warm water to help uh, liquefy it. Um, so because of the high melting point, that's gonna really aid these deodorant bars of staying nice and firm. But this is the coconut oil I'm using. If you don't have a 92 degree, you can certainly use just a regular, this is a 76 degree coconut oil. Most coconut oils that you see in the grocery store are 76 degree. So this would be perfectly fine. It'll be a little bit softer, but still really good if you wanna use just a regular coconut oil. No harm, no foul. So that's the coconut oil, and because I had it melted, I poured it in here and measured off. I need 14 grams, and look, it already hardened just because of the coolness of um, my little glass beaker. So I'm gonna get it on my scale here and tear this out. There we go. So the coconut oil is already in here. Let's talk about the next ingredients. So we're gonna do our hard oils and butters and waxes, get them melted down, then we will add our dry ingredients. So the next ingredient that's going in here is 14 grams of mango butter. You could use any butter you like, a hard butter. Um, shea, you could do uh, kupawasu, you could do kokum, you could do, oh gosh, there's so many to choose from. But I am using mango butter. I think it's delightful and I have it. So 14 grams of mango butter is gonna go in here. Easy peasy, and then the next 
thing that we need to be melting is our beeswax. Here is the kind I'm using today. I got this on Amazon. It's just a nice basic beeswax. And I do like it when it comes in the little pastelis like that because they melt down a little easier and it's easy to measure out tiny increments. So I have 14 grams of beeswax. This is a pretty easy recipe. It's basically 14 grams of everything except the vitamin E and the essential oils. <laughs> so it's easy to remember. So here goes the beeswax. Or not 14 grams if you want. If you're making a bigger batch, just remember equal portions of all of the oils, butters, and waxes. So I've got this. So we've got the coconut, the mango, the beeswax is in here. Now we need to melt this down. And this is my little cheater. Somebody, you know, wrote in my comments, that's not a double boiler. No, it's not a double boiler. It's a hot plate with a saucepan filled with water and a, and a terry cloth rag in the bottom so that the beaker doesn't bounce around. I don't have a conduction top. I really love those where you can set the glass right on top and it'll melt it. It's very cool. Don't have one. And, um, this works great. So this is my cheater version of a double boiler and I know it's technically not a double boiler. So thank you for pointing that out, whoever did. I'm gonna turn this up and we're gonna just let this sit until it's melted. And then we will come in and let's talk about the dry ingredients that we're gonna add. The next two ingredients is baking soda, 14 grams, and 14 grams of arrowroot. So here's the baking soda. I get these massive bags because I use this in bath bomb making also. And uh, baking soda is a relatively inexpensive ingredient. It's great. And here is the arrowroot powder that I use. I got this on Amazon. If you don't have arrowroot, you could use cornstarch. You could use kaolin clay. I haven't experimented with uh, the others, but you could use a cornstarch or a kaolin clay in replacement. I like arrowroot. It's a very fine powder. It's not, it doesn't irritate your skin, and I think it works great. So the arrowroot is going in here too. Those are the dry ingredients. I have them already pre-measured. And then for this one, the uh, baking soda version, I am gonna be using sandalwood essential oil. Um, just a little bit in there. So that's for the baking soda version. And then when we do the sensitive skin version, which is basically the same recipe, only no baking soda, I'm gonna use lavender essential oil. Cause to me, lavender seems soothing. And if you have sensitive skin, this really spoke to me. So those are the essential oils we'll do. And then my vitamin E oil, just a couple drops of vitamin E oil will go into each of these because I think it has really good skin nourishing benefits and, uh, and that's just how I formulate it. So that's going in there too. I'm just waiting for this to melt all up and then we will get on to our next step. All right, we are back and our beeswax and oils and butters are all melted. Looks absolutely perfect. So let's tear this out. And before I stir in our dry ingredients, I'm gonna go ahead and stir in my vitamin E oil and our essential oils. Um, and then we will add in the dry ingredients. Just in case it gets a little thick, I wanna make sure these are really well and dispersed. So the vitamin E oil, I don't really have a measurement. I'm gonna do about three to six drops. As you know, I know that's not scientific. Let me see, if it registers, I will tell you. One, two, three, four, five, six. It didn't even register on here. I just need a little bit because these are so tiny. If you're making a big batch, um, I would just you know keep it very slight. And now the essential oil. Um, I'm gonna go for 0.5, so half a gram, which is about 15 drops of essential oil. So let's tear this out and I'm gonna count 15 and see if we can get up to half a gram here. Okay, we've got the vitamin E and the essential oil in there. That's sandalwood essential oil, it smells really good. And um, yeah, I'm using the Now brand for the sandalwood. I think it's just a good basic essential oil. I know there are essential oil wars going on out there and people are very passionate about their particular brand. So I would say if you love a brand, use that brand. That would be good. So there we go. Now we've got our arrowroot and our baking soda and all we have to do is just blend this in. If it starts to get really, really thick, we can just put it back on the heated water here to keep it pourable consistency, but it looks like we're not gonna have any issues at all. And the only um, disclaimer is you just wanna make sure that uh, you have a nice smooth mix and that there aren't any baking soda clumps. 
wouldn't hurt anything, but it's not, you know, it's not fun to have a dry powdery clump in your deodorant. So I'm just making sure this is absolutely blended. And now I have my two little mini deodorants here. I think they're so cute. And we'll talk about labeling when we get these all made and cooled off. That's a whole different subject. Let's get these poured. Let me pull my spoon out. So I like to use a spoon so I can kind of run through and see if there's any clumps trying to sneak past me. Okay. Let's get on to our sensitive skin version deodorant and it is pretty much the exact same recipe as the first one we did minus the baking soda but i wanted to talk about replacements if you have coconut allergies and you're sensitive to coconut Babassu oil is a perfect replacement for coconut oil. So any lotion or skin formula that calls for coconut oil, you can replace with Babassu. It's beautiful and uh, it's not the same nut as a coconut. So maybe you wouldn't have an allergy to this. So that is a good replacement for uh, coconut oil, which I have in here and look how quick it firms up. So got that. Now let's do our 14 grams of beeswax. Same beeswax, same measurement. Um, I actually made a little more than I needed. I'm glad I had an extra container off to the side. And then instead of mango, this time we're gonna use shea butter. So we're gonna use a different butter in here, cause why not? Let me tear this out, make sure my measurements are good. 14 grams of shea butter going in here, perfect. Now we're gonna melt the oils and butters and waxes here on my little hot plate. And we'll be back when it's ready to go. Super quick, right? I love it. All right, we're back, it's all melted out. And so let's do again, we'll do six drops of our vitamin E oil in here. And again, that's not even registering on my scale. So just six drops is what I'm gonna go for. <laughs> and then my essential oil. And uh, I this doesn't have a drop lid on it, so I'm gonna use my little pipette here. And again, I'll do 15 drops for this tiny little batch in here, which is about 0.5 or half a gram. All right, and now I have 14 grams of arrowroot powder. And again, you could use cornstarch or kale and clay if you wanted. Um, I do think that the cornstarch and the kale and clay tend to leave more of a white cast. Like if you were wearing a black t-shirt and you were pulling it over your head and sometimes deodorants can leave a cast on your clothes. So that's why I like the arrowroot. I think it leaves less of a white cast um, on your clothing and stuff. Um, so. There it is, but the other ones will work equally as well for, you know, just taking away the any greasiness feel and giving it kind of a substance to the deodorant stick. We'll give both of these a little shot, a try when we're done too. So I'm just mixing and mixing till I don't see any more clumps or anything. And then we'll get it poured in our little containers and we'll come back and talk about labels. Um, these are tiny, so they're going to take a much different label than a full-size uh, bottle. So I'm going to be, you know, making little ones for these. But um, if you are making a full-size deodorant stick, you will need to uh, <laughs> make the appropriate size label, you know. We are back. The deodorants are all cooled off and solidified, and I think they just look fabulous. And they have that creamy sort of ivory color. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and touch one because these are gonna be for me and my husband. This is the sandalwood one with baking soda. So let me just crank it up just a little. Oh my, it feels smooth. Has just an essence of sandalwood. I'm glad I didn't put too much um, uh, essential oil in there went kind of light and I like that but look it doesn't leave any white cast 
It feels really good, kind of conditioning. It doesn't leave any sort of sheen, shiny feel. When I go like this, you can barely feel, I will say just the teeniest little bit of texture, not grit, but that's the baking soda, which is a deodorizer. If your skin is not sensitive to it, it really does make a good natural deodorant. Um, especially with summer coming on. We're in middle Tennessee, we get hot and sticky here. So deodorant, I like it. Um, but look, it doesn't make a sheen or a shine and it feels really good. This one has the mango butter in it. Um, all right, I'll go ahead and try one of the lavenders. Mm, again, just a very gentle sort of the essence of lavender. It's not like whack you in the face floral. So I think my husband would even be happy to use this. And I'll try it on the outside of my hand, a little different spot. And again, no white cast. That's one of the reasons I like the arrowroot because it doesn't leave like a white smear. This wouldn't get on. So look, <laughs> I'll even show you. I have a black sleeve here. Let me rub it on here. And it's not leaving a white smudge on my clothing. So um, I do like the arrowroot for that reason. And this is not leaving any sheen. Again, this one had the shea butter in it. It feels beautiful. This one is a little smoother because it doesn't have the baking soda. The arrowroot has no texture at all. So this one is very smooth, great for sensitive skin. I am so thrilled with these and I hope you give them a try. And again, if you don't have the 92 degree melting coconut, which is a little firmer, these are gonna be still very, very nice. I just feel like these do have a melting point. The beeswax really helps with that. Uh, and the high degree melt point coconut oil helps with that also. So, you know, if you uh, are sending priority and it's not gonna be sitting at the post office in an unclimatized area for a long time, these would probably be fine to ship. But make them for yourself at home too. Um, buying ingredients in bulk is a little bit of an investment up front, but when you get into price per unit, it saves you a lot of money. Making these versus buying a natural deodorant at the store, you're gonna save some money. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the labels. So I made the little sandalwood. It's got my name, what it is, a natural deodorant, and it has the ingredients listed in descending order. Here's my sensitive skin lavender ones. These are two inch round labels from onlinelabels.com. I am not sponsored by them. I buy all of my own labels. They've never contacted me. So this is just my unsolicited opinion. I think they have a great selection and their maestro label designer is um, really nice and user friendly because I am tech challenged. And so I, I can design labels on there. I believe anybody can. <laughs> so here's the thing, these little sample, okay, this is the one I didn't use. These little sample size bottles are super duper teeny and short, and I didn't have a label that would fit perfectly on here. So what's gonna happen, let's see, I don't wanna get the wrong label. Okay, this is my sandalwood. It's gonna cover part of the lid and then you'll have to score it to take it off. So it, this almost works like um, my lip balm labels that have the little tabs so you know the seal is not broken on it. I'll show you. So let me get this lined up here. All right, so we are fully on there and sealed. And then when I'm gonna go to open this, I'm just gonna take a little knife and score it along here and it'll open right up but I think that fits on there pretty well and uh, I'm happy with it. It's got all the information. So there it is. Let me get my, there we go. My lavender that I didn't molest. <laughs> the untampered with bottle. And there we go. So we have a sensitive skin version and a regular version, and I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I hope you give these recipes a try. Again, there are tons of deodorant recipes out there. I just think this ratio of ingredients has a really good finish to it, and I really, really like it. So I hope you give it a try, and let me know if you do, or if there's tweaks that you make to your recipe. I'd love to hear it. Share the information with everybody down below. And I thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you have a wonderful day.